Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski, speaking to you live from my home in Susia, the southern Hebron Hills. Today is Thursday, May 13th, and uh, it is a rough time here in Israel. Um, As you all know, we are at war, and make no mistake, it is not a uh, situation. It's a war. When someone fires rockets on you, on innocent civilians, that's a declaration of war. And that's what we're in, and we all feel it no matter where we are, um, in, in all kinds of ways. Now, where I live, I am, as those of you who know geography, I'm south of Hebron, okay, between Be'er Sheva, we're the North Negev, and um, to leave. I have to travel, I have one road, I can either turn right, which takes me south, on 60, towards Be'er Sheva, or I can go left, which takes me north, towards Kiret Arba and Gush Etzion and Jerusalem. And there have been riots more, and, and rock throwing more than normal. It's sad that it is normal, and that is like a normal situation to have rock throwing on the road, but now it's, it's more. And um, we all have security warnings, you know, not to, not to leave. Uh, so I have not gone out for two days. No one has. Um, and you know, today my son, he's on the train now to Beersheba. Uh, sorry, he's on the train to Tel Aviv to take a lifeguarding course. And he just texted me saying they can't go on the tracks to load. The Arabs are all over the tracks. So they're going back and he's going back to Beersheba. Meanwhile, my husband's in Beersheba and they just had an alarm and they all had to leave their offices and stand and brace themselves for rocket attacks. Uh, it's everywhere here. Uh, a good friend of mine in Pedak Tikva um, could not get through the night. She's uh, a nervous wreck. My friend in Tel Aviv took his family to Haifa. The, the, he said Tel Aviv is empty. Uh, it is a war. People are evacuating. We have 20 families here in Susi now from Otev Aza, the Aza, Gaza envelope area here at the field school <clears throat> and families from Ashkelon. We're busy here. We're busy. All right. Looks like we have to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for coming to see us and hear us here on the show. Um, I'm Zezi Fold. Um, Natalie will hopefully be with us in just a few minutes. Her uh, connection just got lost. And we're going to get her back in just a moment. Um, obviously, the topic of the day that we're going to be discussing, um, Natalie was kind enough to have me back on the show. And obviously, the topic we're going to be discussing today is the situation here in Israel. Uh, you know, I consistently be getting phone calls from family and friends overseas, and they're talking about what's going on over there and stay safe and all these other things. So today we're going to talk about the situation down here on the ground, what's going on. Um, albeit, you know, I'm, as, as, as we all know, I'm here in Beit Shemesh. I'm not on the front grounds, but uh, at this point spent many a night at this point with, uh, you know, rockets uh, overhead and rockets nearby, and late last night at about 2 o'clock in the morning, my, myself and my kids, we could not sleep due to the fact that, uh, you know, there was the house was rumbling and the house was moving because of bombs far away, and, you know, we wish they were further away, but they, they're not. They, they're, they're close by, 
And uh, it's a pretty crazy situation here in Israel right now. Um, in certain areas, as, as, as Natalie will tell you and attest to, in certain areas, you know, they're, they're yeah. having their day-to-day life and things are not. <laughs> hey, Natalie, you there? I'm here. Yeah, sorry about that. Go ahead. No problem. I was just introducing you, Natalie. For once, I get to introduce you, which is so, oh. so nice. <laughs> it's a crazy day. It's a crazy couple of days. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of days. And I, what I was just talking about and what I was telling them is that, um, you know, we're going to be talking hopefully a little bit about the situation and giving them really a little bit of a uh, an eye into what's really going on on the grounds. You know, there's certain communities that, you know, day, day-to-day basis is going on and no, no problem. And then there's certain people that haven't left their bunker in pretty much three days. Right. Um, and, there's, and there's both sides to it. Right, right. What's it like in uh, Beit Shemesh today? So today we had one we had one alarm uh, go off. We had to bring everyone to the bunkers and um, stay there until the alarms went off. Uh, the bomb actually didn't hit here in Beit Shemesh; it hit nearby community. But um, did you, you know, feel it? it? Did you hear it? Did tell me that if you if, you know when you're inside, what did you yes, experience? It, it depends. If it hits the ground near you, you feel it. I mean, you mm. feel it. I mean, it depends how close it is to you, but you feel it. Um, I was just telling the listeners that, you know, last night I was up till very, very late at night because, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I was feeling things that were going on in Gaza. Um, you know, you think that, you know, Gaza is so far away from Yerushalayim, Beit Shemesh, Be'er Sheva, Bnei Brak, all these different places. And you're saying, well, they're so far away. It's not. Who says you know, that? We discuss, who says we, that? We who, who tell me who says that? I don't say that. I know. I agree. There are people. There are people. It's ha- an hour from me. Are you kidding me? It's not far. Right, right. It's not far. It's not far. Ashkelon also, not far. Uh, these, these places are, Israel's small, you know. Um, you're never really too far. When people say that to me, or, is it near you? I'm like, well, yeah, everything's close. Everything's relative. Um, uh, you know, just because you don't hear the siren and feel the shaking, you'd get in your car and you'd drive 10 minutes, you, you might. Yeah, and it's it's really insane. The other the, just the other day, the first uh, the first day of the bombings and the attacks here in Israel, um, I was driving and I, I wasn't really prepared for it at the time. Now we know my kids are attuned to listen for the sirens, but I was driving and my partner in America we were on the phone. And he's like, "Is that siren?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And I told him one second, let me just lower the volume on the car phone, and I lower the volume, and all of a sudden I hear the siren. So that's right. I, that's I, right. I was. At first, I froze, and I was like, um, okay, what am I supposed to do? Like, you know, I was like a little bit shell-shocked, and I get out of my car, and all of a sudden, I hear a whistling from a missile. Uh. And all of a sudden, I see right above my head, not looking forward, not right above my head is a missile. And all of a sudden, a couple seconds later, um, the Iron Dome comes to the rescue and literally blows it up and shell shocked as I was, I literally just took a picture of it and ran inside. My wife is like, Where were you? I was like, uh, I was outside. What happened? She's like, We've been sitting in the in the uh Khedem Ramad, which is the sec- the secure room in the house. Uh, we've been sitting here for the last fifteen minutes. The kids are frantic. Yeah. Um and you know you, you know, life does go on in Israel. It's one of the reasons that we as Jews are so good at what we are, it's just taking the punishments and moving on is because we move on. We we really do. Yeah. Yeah, things happen, and the next day, yesterday, there was no school in most schools around the country that were close to uh, Gaza. We we didn't have schools here. They issued a warning, uh, and then last night they said, you know, warning over. We're going back to school tomorrow, and kids right. went back to school. Um, not all right. of them. Certain people were very nervous about sending their kids back to school. You know, certain schools are in caravans. There are certain schools don't have a uh, a secure room, and therefore people are concerned about sending their kids to those right. schools on days like these. But um, all in all, that's really what's going on over here. Yeah, different. Uh, Natalie, different I actually, d- go go ahead. ahead. No, I wanted to actually bring something up to you. I, I I can't even tell you my feelings right now. I'm I'm like my blood has been boiling all day, and I was waiting to talk to you all day long. You know, I posted last night on Facebook about two o'clock in the morning. I posted, you know. You know, my my kids and I are having a hard time sleeping right now because the bomb's going on. We hope that everyone is okay around the country. And I said, let's just keep them praying. And then I and then I said, you know what? 
for all my friends that keep on telling me stay safe, but they 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 voted, and I, I hate getting into politics when it comes to this kind of thing. But I said you voted for Biden. If you're looking at the Democrats and what they're talking about right now, the way they're responding is America, Israel has to come to peace and has to stop this two-sided attack. This was not a two-sided attack. This is very much one-sided. And every time the media does the same exact garbage, where they're only reporting when Israel starts responding to the attacks. I want to hear one person that's listening right now that would sit back and relax when their people are being shot on day in and day out. It has pretty much not stopped for the last 70 hours. For the last 70 hours, it has not stopped. The barrage of missiles have been shot into Israel. What country, what city, what state would sit back and relax and do nothing while their people are being shot at? And you know what? The answer is always, well, it's, it's, it's uneven. Because you know why it's uneven? Because we, the Israel has built a, an amazing system to take, care of their, to take care of their people. Well, the Arab people and the PLO in Gaza are putting missiles, there's video after video after video, of watching them drive these missile um, um, shooting devices down in the streets, among schools, amongst houses, so they're protecting their, their, their missiles amongst people. Right. Israel would Why? never do that. Yeah. We stand and okay. take care of each other. Okay. Our audience is mostly friendly towards Israel. So you're preaching well, to the choir here, okay? I, I'm, um, I, I'm not, though. I wish I was. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I think I'm not. Because we need more people out there to stand up and talk. You, you know, there are so many people that are there, and they're listeners. And they, they hear, and they're like, yeah, I stand with Israel. So let me post a thing on Facebook that says, I stand with Israel. You need to do more. Yeah, they don't. Stand up. They're, they're not going to do more. They're, these, I hate to tell you, they're not going to do more. People are afraid. They want to maintain their social status. They want to maintain their livelihood and their position. This is the same Great. reason Great. that you know people happens? who, you know, Gal they're Gadot. quiet. This is, yeah, they're Gal quiet. Gadot, Wonder, Woman, Wonder Woman was called out two days ago. Gal Gadot, born Israeli. She's got a lot of followers around the world. You know, she, got, she became Wonder Woman and she got a lot of followers. She was called out by people in Israel and said, you know what, say something. Say something. You got followers around the world. Say something. Open your mouth. The, yeah. Open your mouth. Say something. You know what? The PLO, the Hamas, they're very clear on their message. We want to kill every single Jew that we can. So, what kind of message can we Israelis send out there? And she responds. And her message was very clear. We have to make sure that the two sides can come to a peace process, and we have to make sure the two sides can come together. Yeah. That's not a clear message. No, that's a clear that's, message that that's, Israel uh, that's courageous. The okay. I mean, that's um, cowardice. It's, it's, it's cowardly. And. She's in Hollywood now, okay? She's more Hollywood than, than Israeli. I, I hate to say it, but this is what happens when people leave Israel. They, like, lose a piece of themselves. They, they become diluted. Why are there this big, strong, the IAC, the, Amer the Israeli American Council, this big organization yeah. in the U.S.? These are Israelis. Why are they there? Come on. It's... I get it. I, I listen, Natalie. I, I don't I do have a it. lot of I don't have a lot of sympathy, and I don't have a lot of patience for people who don't live here. I mean, where where we have nowhere to go. Jews have nowhere to go. This is Israel. This is ours. This is the place to go. Well, you want everyone to leave and run to Los Angeles? It's ridiculous. Right. Don't run. Stay and fight. I, I had, you know. I just had two two friends respond to me on Facebook and say, "Don't blame Biden. He did nothing wrong here." This is Israel's fault and only Israel's fault. I'm like, are you, are you? These are Orthodox well, it, Jews. Well, first of all, it's not, not Biden's fault, okay? Biden is like, you know, he's not, he's not, the, 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 he's not prime minister of Israel. Correct. Okay. But so we have policy, no one to count on. We have to stand on our own. Israelis 100%. have to be strong and, you know, they're just not strong. A hundred percent. The policies that ridiculous. America puts forth. And the way they oh, the way they talk okay. you know, okay, sends out yeah. a message. Yeah, whatever. I'm you don't think it sends uh, a not... message when, when 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 Biden says we have to come to peace, or when Trump yeah. says we will stand behind Israel 100. percent You don't think it sounds? I know. It's disgusting. It's horrible. It's horrible. We had a good four years, and we were counting those years. And I knew, and we all knew, these years aren't going to last forever. We're not going to get a Trump forever. So use them. Yeah. And look what, okay. I mean, good things end. Israel has to stand up by itself and, you know, be a strong Israel. 
not yeah. wimpy, you know? Bullies get become bullies because of the, the fear of their prey. You know, the kid in the hallway who punches you, he's going to punch you again. Or you keep running, he's going to run after you. Punch him back. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> and, and that's what wow. they heard. And, and the PLO yeah. and Hamas heard that. Very clear. We're out of time, Zez. We're out of time. Ah. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. <laughs> it was good. Have a good day, Nat. Go back to your, uh, go back to your life and uh, stay <laughs> safe. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar? She's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. Shalom, I am Leah Aharoni. Join me on my show, News from the Torah. Each Sunday, we'll use the weekly Torah portion as a prism for understanding the news today. Listen to News from the Torah to gain clarity about the times we're living in and to understand your own spiritual path in the process. News from the Torah every Sunday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski. Joining us today, um, we have a medic who is a volunteer medic with Hatzalala Logvodot, Rescuers Without Borders. This is the organization I'm involved with. Now, this is a 28-year-old medic who lives in Harnof. Now, he's Israeli, Joey Kelman, but his English is perfect, and his parents are American, so I asked him to join us to tell us what things are like on the ground. Yesterday, I think Joey was in Ashkelon, helping out. I believe he's on his way down again. Um, there are some rocket attacks as we speak. I hope we get a clear signal. Joey, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Thank you. I hear you. I hear you. Why don't Perfect. you tell me and tell our listeners what you saw these past uh, 48 hours? So, uh, uh, the last 48 hours were quite uh, chaotic down south. Um... There were dozens of dozens of missiles uh, sent down south on uh, uh, hitting civilian buildings, um, and we, as an organization, um, we go down to support the people down there, um, give some medical care if needed. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, um, we visited a whole bunch of uh, uh, houses down in Ashkelon that were hit by rockets and uh, uh, treated people who who needed medical treatment. So, yeah, it's uh, it's quite crazy down there. Right, right. So I, I'm getting alerts. I'm on the team um, chat, and I, I get alerts all day long. There are actually too many, too many things to post, too many things to report. It's just too much. And um, one thing I do understand is that the ambulances and all the first response vehicles are just continuously driving around, looping through the different neighborhoods in Ashkelon. And so I have a question for you. When I spoke to the vice president of Hatzalokovot, R.A., I said, well, you know, if if they have that system, why are you down there? What are you exactly doing? And I'm going to tell you what he said, and I want to hear your opinion, too. He told me that they can't, you know, things are falling, and it's so unpredictable that you never know um, when people are going to need help. And they, they're getting there first because they, they went down special for this. Tell me what you what you say. Right. So, so Hatzalal uh, Elogvulot, Rescues Without Borders, um, we have um, a few uh, sectors where we uh, volunteer. So, obviously, we uh, we go down there uh, uh, to try to help the wounded. Um, besides that, um, we have um, uh, centers down south that uh, um, there. We have uh, uh, one large center in Spilot, um and we have over there therapists and. The point is that people who have uh, uh, trauma, post-trauma from uh, um, from the situation, they can come over and uh, uh, to these centers and get uh, help uh, uh, from our professionals down there. So we what go do you mean down se- there. Uh, you, okay, wait make- a second. Wait a second. When you say centers, 
Don't you have um, activity centers, community centers for the, for the children? Correct. Okay. It's, community, it's community centers that, uh, um, uh, and the point is over there for activity for the kids uh, uh, in the afternoon. We have uh, uh, shelters over there so they can stay over there. Um, and therapy for uh, adults and children, whoever needs. And uh, we went down south to bring more equipment to these centers, um, to speak to the people down south, to see how they're doing. They really appreciate the support when people from outside come, and so they're not alone. Uh, people are around the country thinking about them. And right. um, besides that, when <laughs> we have uh, uh, sirens and we hear of uh, uh, places that were hit, um, yeah, we try to get there as soon as possible. Yesterday, we uh, responded to four uh, um, uh, houses that were hit by missiles, and we reached their way before the ambulances were able to get there. Um, yeah, that is amazing. That is so yeah. that is the message I want everyone to hear. Uh, two things you said that I'd like to just talk about, expand upon a little bit. When you say these people, these children are in these community centers, I want under, everyone to understand, because right now I live in a community a yeshuv, and we have about 20 families who are here staying in our field school from the uh, Gaza area and, and a few families today from Ashkelon. And these families, you know, they're, they had, they had to evacuate. Um, what, what you're saying, Joey, is these families that are in these centers, they have to evacuate their homes because the, the sirens just continue it's, you know, it's just continually going. They can't sit there in a shelter forever. Am I right? Correct. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So that's the situation. That's, what you're doing is so important because you're actually like, and, and what we're doing here in Susia, you know, we have all these B'nai Akiva kids, these activities going on. Um, I opened the, the store yesterday for them. These people need something to do. Okay. We don't want them to feel like refugees. And when you go down to the South, Joey and, and all the volunteers with Rescuers Without Borders, and you are supporting them, it's like giving them a, a, like a, a ray of sunshine. It's like a magic pill. Isn't it, it really is like that. Their, their response yeah. when they see us. At first, I was nervous. We were knocking on, uh, there was a missile that fell right outside of one of our centers down south. And we went down there, and we were going to speak to the neighbors around the center to ask them how they're feeling. And uh, we were knocking on one of the doors, and I was nervous at first. I was thinking, I wonder what this uh, person is going to respond when he opens the door and he sees us with our uh, uh, shirts uh, of the uh, rescues without borders. Is he going to get nervous? And when he opened the door, the smile on his face, he was so happy uh, to see someone coming and actually asking him, how are you doing? Is there anything we can help you with? Right. Um, and the right. people now, now explain just, that because, they yeah, it. yeah, yeah, they need that. Now, why? Now, now explain why. And, and just, uh, you know, when these, when these things are going on, there's nobody, you know, this is real. This is not a drill. So yeah, the, everyone, the missiles are yeah. hitting. Yeah, yeah. Right. So every uh, family is like tough. huddled and they're supposed to lock your windows, lock your door, get under your bed, get under your table. It's, it's frightening. It is frightening. Not just for the children. It's frightening for everybody. Yes. Yes. The, the, it, it's interesting. The children um, in, in our centers, they're sheltered. They're fine. They're having a great time. The parents who are at home, uh, many times we see that the, uh, they have uh, less of uh, uh, they're less calm about the situation because they're home, uh, running to the bomb shelter every few minutes. Uh, it's 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 not a normal uh, uh, way to live, and we try to to bring some sanity into their uh, into their daily life down there. Yeah, and it's it's really amazing that you're doing that, um, taking a break from your own normal lives into this war zone. Uh, very helpful. It's it's very it's very nice now. Rescuers that borders, what we are, for all of you listening, we're actually like reinforcements, okay? We're like a medical team that is just like extra, and we need that extra. We just do. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know? Israel's a small country, and there shouldn't be, uh, there shouldn't be multiple emergency rescue medical teams. It shouldn't need, you know, there shouldn't be a need for that in a state the size of New Jersey. But there yeah. is. There is. Yeah. It's, uh, yesterday we were visiting um, a place called Nitiva Asara. Um, and whoever's following the, the siren alert, I think it's probably one of the um, communities down south that gets the most sirens. Uh, it's right off the Gaza border. And we met a few soldiers down there um, 
who seemed drained. They, they treated their friend that morning who was hit by a rocket. Um, unfortunately, he died uh, uh, later yesterday, but uh, uh, we were speaking to them, and they told us they were missing uh, medical equipment because they spent all their medical equipment. They wasted it on the... didn't waste it. They used it on their uh, friends who were uh, injured. Uh, and we had the great opportunity to help them out, filled up their uh, uh, medical supplies. Uh, they were very, very right. grateful. Yeah. Right, right. It, it's it's acts like that, um, little, but they're significant. They're significant because every Jew is valuable, and every soldier and every human, every boy, every girl is someone's brother or father or sister or mother or you know it's. We're, we're all so connected and it's such a human experience to live here. You know, you're not watching on the, on the TV, what's going on over in uh, some far distant land. We all have people here and you listeners today, all of you have friends here. You all have me. I'm your friend. And I, my son's in the army, you know, you know, many people here. We're all, we're all family. We all do what we can to help. Rescuers Without Borders is an amazing organization. They even have a horse therapy farm down in one of those kibbutzim along the Gaza border to treat post-trauma. Because these children and these families, they, they live a life that nobody should be subjected to. Um, these, these children grow up with these fears that, uh, you know, they're afraid of balloons. I mean... Children should love balloons. They're, they're afraid of them because they're bombs there. Um, they, they regress. Uh, bedwetting comes back when they're older. Um, they, they, they stop talking. Uh, the, the therapy helps. The, 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 the zoo therapy is called. Animal therapy, the horses, it helps. And what you're doing, visiting them, um, Joey, and, and being just like an extra support, you know. Uh, the soldiers, too. I understand the soldiers have been there for two weeks along the border and they're exhausted so they've been there for a while yeah they yeah, they were exhausted and uh mm. yeah it was uh, quite a situation it's, down there yeah it's it's hot it's it's um heck it, it, it has its moments of of lull and then all of a sudden panic and it's uh serious stuff going on over here well thank and you for joining is, us um it was my pleasure and, pleasure. you know, you keep up the good work. Call a kavod to you and, and everyone together with you today. Stay safe. Watch your head. I understand you need helmets and vests. So let's just say that loud and clear. We need these guys to be protected. Helmets and vests. Absolutely. Um, we, got a, we got a donation for 25 the helmets and vests that uh, arrived yesterday. Amazing. It amazing. Out, and we need a donation for another 50. So, uh Good. Shout out to you guys out there. If uh, anyone can help us out, we're missing another 50 sets for helmets and vests for our uh, uh, medics and teams out there down south, and uh, we would appreciate the help. Thank you. I will be- I'll make a note in my summary, and thank you for joining us. We're off. We're off the air, Joey. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Bye-bye. In a time where feelings have become fat, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared. One man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Political Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski. That was, uh, that was great. That was very, very good that we caught him. Busy guy. 
Uh, next up is Aliza Bracha from Pardes Hana, who is joining us today. I understand it's pretty quiet there. Aliza? Hi, how are you? Good, good. We're managing, we're managing. Um, why don't you share with us your uh, situation there in, in light of all the bombings and rockets, and, and then we can just jump into the, what you've been up to aside from running into shelters. Right, so Parde Sana is a little bit further north than where where the major action is happening. Um, so we've been kind of like on edge and on alert, but we actually haven't had any sirens here. Uh, but our kids who were in um, boarding schools further south uh, both got woken up in the middle of the night and had to run down. And uh, they, you know, some of the groups have been kind of sheltering in place and staying, you know, staying safe. So we've got our first uh, welcome to Israel experience. We've been here for just yeah. over two months, and here's the new normal. And and you have to behave normally, which is the most unusual thing. For us, it was like, oh, we're going to send our kids to school tomorrow. And I was like, no, the whole country's shutting down. And they're like, no, it's not. Only if you have a siren, then you could go into the shelter. But even when you come out, Everybody should just go back to normal and go back to life. So, like, this is how we do it. And yeah. that was a real shock for me, a real a surprise and something that we have to just adjust to, learning how to be, I don't know. Flexible. I don't even know how to say Flexible. To be, I, flexible, but normal. Like, you know, drive around, go to the grocery store, pick up your kids, to have play dates, let well, them ride, where you ride are, bikes uh, outside. <laughs> It depends where you are, okay? It depends where you are. It depends what the security right. situation is, okay? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that's true, really. I mean, here where I am, I, I can't go. I can't get out. I can't right. get out. They're throwing rocks on the road, so I can't get out. Um, right. Uh, kids had school, but, can't, you know, the trips were canceled. You know, it's, uh, you have to just stay calm, and, and, be, and you, have to be, you have to be smart. You make decisions, uh, you know? Do you have to go shopping? No, you could stay here and skip the shopping for a day. Because look, some Arabs, wild Arabs are going to come throw rocks at your car because you went to get cheese. What are you going to do? What are you going to say later? Right. So you got to be smart. Right. That's all. Just make decisions like in a different kind of different variables. Um, what about Shavuot? This will be your first Shavuot in Israel. It's Sunday night. And yeah. uh, are you, you, you know, are you looking forward to it? Are you making plans? How is it different here? How is the shopping different here? Do you, do you notice? Do you feel it? So uh, the biggest difference for us is that it's one day instead of two days. And it's, for us, it's exciting to just be able to have a holiday, enjoy the holiday, and move on and not have to repeat and do it a second time. Right. We very much. We like our holidays, but it's exhausting to do things over and over again, especially when you get into it. You have a good time the first night, and then like you have to really work yourself up to do the same thing again. So that, to me, is the biggest difference, and we are jumping right in. We are actually hosting um, some classes at our house for teens. So we yeah, have a nice, friend, friend nice. of ours. Yeah, That's... they're going to host one, one hour. We're going to host the other hour. We're going to have dairy and danish and fruit and you know pizza and lasagna and who knows what else and we're just jumping jumping right into hosting and welcoming people into our home okay so that's very nice so i don't know what part is kind of like here where i live they have a schedule put out and it's learning all night um i think until three in the morning or something that you know every age group goes to a different house where you are how is it uh organized as it is it that organized I don't think it's that organized here. I think there's individuals who are doing different things and different synagogues are having some things, but it's not, uh, I, I, for us, I only know about what's going to happen for the teens and my younger kids we're not sending anywhere. I mean, okay. it's late, you know, I'm not going to keep them up until three o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. It's uh, crazy late. It's, it starts right. at like, <laughs> like 1030 or something. <laughs> it's, they were like, it's, it's uh, crazy here. It's, it's nuts. It's like, it's like Lag Womer, you know, everyone's up. Right. It's funny. Right. It's funny. But um, yeah, I always I always thought that was uh, nuts. But uh, when you went shopping, did you see the cheese counter as soon as you walked in the grocery store and all that? Did you uh, did you get, you know, so, excited about that? So my, I sent my husband on the shopping mission. Oh, he, why? He, 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 <laughs> because he sent me a message from the store, like a voice message. He's like, 
the lines are insane. I'm standing for an hour in line. Right. He's like, I don't want to go shopping anymore. We need a new plan. I said, no, no, it's just Shavuos. It's just around holidays. It's right. not always that there's an hour line in the supermarket. He's like, I, I, right. I, it's too much. Yeah. So we've yeah. been talking about, you know, like, do you order online? Do you have people deliver? Do you buy it the week before and freeze it? You know, we got to come up with a better plan so that okay. we don't get That's stuck right. in the stores. That should be your biggest problem, right? Right. I, compared to what's going on here, it's such a – it's nothing to even talk about or complain about. It's like how, right. how, how do you live with, with such different things happening? And, and on a it minute's is. notice, you just have to switch. You have to go from like, okay, everything's fine. Would you like some dinner? Nope. Okay. <laughs> let's, That's right. Let's go. It's, it's a world of extremes here. It's a land of extremes. Yeah. And, and – and just be glad you're here and not watching it from afar, asking what's going on. You're, you can tell people what's going on. And um, so this is part of life can. here. You know, there's the very, like, I think you and I always say this. They're the very, the highest of the highs here. The highest of the highs. It's unbelievable how quickly it changes and how we go from these greatest joys in these moments and then to the greatest challenge that you could ever experience. Right. And you get both extremes. You you get the best of the best, and you get the hardest of the hard. And yeah. I think it makes you stronger. I I could see why they refer to Israelis as sabras, and you know they're tough on the outside but sweet on the inside because you have to be. That's yeah. that's one of the like that's how we live. That's how we survive here. Is by having a certain hardness, which is really a, a core strength to who we are. And at the same time, having a true sweetness to who we are. And, yeah. and they're real. I love that Israelis are so real. There's no, there's really no fluff. <laughs> they right. don't have time for fluff. They're right. just busy living life and doing what they should do and, and doing the best thing they could do. Today I just had my, um, ulpan and it was a virtual one. And the teacher said, listen, I'm in Tel Aviv. So here's what's going to happen. If, an alarm sounds. We're going to take a hafsaka. We're going to take a little break. I'm going to go into the shelter. I'll text you from the shelter. And if I'm able to come out in 10 or 15 minutes, we'll resume. And if not, don't worry. So we'll start another day. Right? Very right. calm. Very, just as matter of fact. like Very matter of fact. On. Yeah, because what else are you going to do? It yeah, yeah. It's so incredible yeah, it's... how they handle such trauma and challenge with such well, grace and dignity. It, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I was I got in a fight with my a friend of mine yesterday because he took his son, they live in Tel Aviv, and he took his son to Haifa. And I said, what? what? You know, what's wrong with you? What are you such a baby? And he called me today. He's like, Natalie, this is not like in 2013. This is not like before. This is serious. You know, we were in the bomb shelter all night and it was one after the other, the alarm, the alarm over and over. And we were in there. We went into like one o'clock in the morning. We didn't come out till like two thirty. And then we had to go back. And he said, my son, he's 12 years old and he, he was scared to go back. He was scared to go back in the apartment. What am I going to do? Um, right. I left. We, we we're in Haifa now. I was like, really? Right. And then I said, where's your wife? She's in the Sinai. I'm like, oh, well, does she know what's going on? He's like, not really. I'm like, well, don't you think you should talk to her the way you're talking to me? He goes, why? So I have to ruin her vacation? I, I, I just, it was amazing. I was like, okay. Uh, all right. I guess I, I, you know, it's very, very different because it's life. It's, it's a, just another facet of life. And just like our rescuers are, are out there now, they, they get like, it's almost like a field trip to them, these, these people who go help. I, I, I have so many messages of help. We have this tech, they have this group in my yeshuv called uh, Nashim Osotovot. Women do good, and you should see these messages. There's a family from Ashkelon with three girls, and who's going to host them for Shabbat? They have nothing. <laughs> they don't have. We've they, been, you, know, we've they, been, you know, we've been getting those messages. Who can host? Family right. with six kids are coming from right. the south. Who has right. room? Who has places? Right, 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 right. And people snatch them up, you know, because they want to do good. Um, today, Bnei Akiva, the entire Bnei Akiva in Susia is doing a big event for all these families that are here. We have, uh, I think I said earlier, 20 families from the Gaza area. Yesterday I opened up the Yachniya for them and I got to know some of these women and they're like, 
you know, they seem very normal. They don't seem stressed. I asked one of them how long they're going to stay. I think that was a, I, I, after I asked her, I thought maybe that was a dumb question, but her answer was amazing to me. She said, I just want to go home already. Wow. And I'm thinking like, well, your home is being rained down on with rockets, but she, it's home. You know what I mean? It's home. Right. And I, I get it. They just, they're displaced. They're, it's, right. it's, it's, it's not vacation. And, you know, I, 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 I know they're all trying to keep it fun. And they're asking, you know, what should we give them? What treats should we give them? Let's get popsicles. And they're looking for different activities for these kids to do because they're displaced for a while. And, uh, you know, it's, right. uh, it's, it's, it's And somehow tough. we it's all tough. stay here and we remain in Israel and this is our country. And oh, yeah. Place. Oh, we and need to. And if we to. didn't stay, well, this, it wouldn't be our Look, place. Elisa, these, these people don't have, <laughs> you, you have somewhere else to go and I have somewhere else to go, but most Israelis don't. This is it. They don't have an American passport. They don't have a London home. They don't have a, another house. I don't have another house either. We don't have a place to go. Um, and, and this is home. And, you know, we need to stay here and fight. And, you know, it's not easy. It's not fun. It's not always comfortable. Right? It's not, but it's, right. it's, there's it's no ours. place that I'd rather be. And there's right. nothing that I'd rather be doing than to be here in this moment. This is my Amen. Moment. Amen. Yeah, fair. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Have a great Shavuot. You too. All the best. You too. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Carr from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 